And I want to preach on some of the most important words in world history um, because this will heal, this will give you so much faith and so much confidence in God and just a more free understanding of um, what God ordained so that you're more at peace. Um, first I want to solve, we just finished solving the Rubik's Cube, now I want to solve every maze on planet Earth. A maze is a fun puzzle, of course. Well, it's very easy, 27, the perfect cube of 3, and then these guys make 9. So amazingly, the word maze um, is a whole bunch of 9s. Triple 9 in the center, and then M, E make 18 double 9. So double 9, triple 9, 45 for the number 3. So, a maze. Solve the maze, sure, fine. Okay. Um, now, more importantly, <laughs> um, these are awesome words to preach on um, because they're very important in the story of God. Guilt, sorrow, fear, sin, you know, mourning, comfort, all nine yards. Um, well, all of these words divide by three to the glory of the triune God. You cannot come to Christ unless you feel the guilt of your sin, and unless you feel the sorrow for your sin, and unless you have the fear of God. Okay? Guilt is not 100% bad at all times. Guilt for, for true disobedience to God is a righteous thing. You need to feel guilty. That's, <laughs> you need to feel sorrowful. There is godly sorrow, and then there is, you know, unhealthy sorrow, where you're beating yourself up unnecessarily, okay? Um, but man, it's like, if you live in a generation where all of a sudden everything is, you know, allowed, and no one's allowed to feel guilty about anything, that's completely terrible. So, just look at the word guilt, like, they're just so beautiful for the number three. Like, you were born a sinner, you had no choice in the matter. You had no choice in the fact that you were born a whining, sniveling, selfish, little person. <laughs> From your mother's womb, you were selfish, you were whiny, you were not the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Okay? <laughs> you were born sinful. You were born selfish. That's just what you have to accept about the story of God. You were born pretty darn pathetic. <laughs> spiritually <laughs> and in every way <sighs> and then God in his wisdom and his pleasure decides that you're gonna get forgiven in Jesus name and then he's going to grow you as a child of God to become more and more like God the character of God, the character of Jesus. We can't argue with God, that's exactly the truth. And so guilt is ordained by God, and so even the word guilt screams out the number three, and it's so obvious. Look at how, look at the obvious parallelism between the word guilt and the word sorrow. All the letters in the center divide by three individually, and then the two bookend letters knit together to make a multiple of three. You cannot ignore that. Amazingly, in the word fear, it's reversed. The two bookend letters are the letters that divide by three, and the two center letters are the letters that knit together to make a multiple of three. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says that godly sorrow is a righteous thing that leads to repentance. Godly sorrow that leads to repentance is not to be regretted. Same thing with godly guilt. King David felt guilty the moment he cut off even a tiny fraction of King Saul's robe. He felt guilt, righteous guilt. Okay? Righteous guilt, righteous sorrow, righteous fear. Okay? They're just, like, you know, these are beautiful words for number three. The word mourn is the exact same. To mourn in sorrow as a result of the guilt that you feel for your sin. All of these words do the exact same phenomenon. And this is now the big kicker that I want to preach on. Is the fact that you were ordained. You were born a sinner. You were literally ordained to miss the mark. I believe 
um, uh, a visual, literal interpretation of the word sin is that you missed the mark. Like if an archer was shooting at a target and he didn't get the bullseye. He missed the mark. Oh, sin. You missed the mark. Basically, it's a way of saying no one's perfect, <laughs> except Jesus. Um, but you just have to marvel, my friends, how all of these words do the exact same thing for the number three. All of these words have the center letters dividing by three individually, and then the bookend letters knit together to make a multiple of three. Guilt, sorrow, sin, and mourn. So that apparently all of these things that have existed in every human being from the dawn of the fall of man actually do exist for the greater glory of God. And that ultimately, yes, Jesus Christ is glorified as the only true sinless human being who ever lived and ever will live. How could Jesus be the number one person in world history if the rest of us weren't ordained <laughs> to be losers? <laughs> as you will. Even the word loser divides by three. You might as well just accept that you are a loser compared to Jesus. <laughs> That's why we worship Jesus. That's why we... Every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord, and we cast our crowns at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> like, thank God I just know who I am. It's like, just be honest. Like, just, okay. I love truth. Truth sets you free. It's like, yeah, you were born to experience guilt over your sin, which you were born to commit. <gasps> Yes, you were. <laughs> you were born a sinner. You couldn't help it. You were committing sins before you even could process words in your brain. As a baby, you were just grabbing stuff left, right, and center. You were just like, I'm the center of the universe. Feed me. Um, and on and on and on. I mean, <laughs> so guilt divides, you know. Guilt divides by three. Sorrow divides by three. Sin divides by three. Mourn divides by three. And they're built in the exact same way. In fact, the word guilt <clears throat> directly parallels the word mourn in, in the fact that the bookend letters make the same value, which is 27, the perfect cube of 3. You mourn, you should mourn over sin. You know, guilt is the God, righteous guilt is the God-ordained mechanism that he has placed in us when we sin, when we disobey him, displease him. Our conscience, if we are close to God, and we are desiring to walk in purity and in, you know, with the Lord, we will have a sensitive conscience that we will feel healthy, righteous guilt that leads us to mourn, and then the word repent divides by three. Okay? Sorrow, fear, sin. Okay? So, but there are Christians that never get over this stuff. They never get over the fact that they still sin occasionally, that they still feel like... So, um, what is... I'm just curious now. 30, 42, this school training center has 40 true. Oh my gosh, this is 54. Amazing. And the word comfort divides by three. I mean, how could God comfort you unless you were mourning in the first place? Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You do. You have to mourn. It's the heart God is concerned with. Are you grieving over the sins of society and the lostness of Canada? Are you sorrowful? You know, are you just... So, I just wanted to preach on those terms because... They're obvious for the number three, you know?